that was. Sorry about that. I, I believe that's actually the first time that the 64-bit viewer has crashed for me. First time for everything, I guess. Uh, I, I don't know, Whirly. Um, I didn't get the usual Apple crash detection box, so I didn't see a stack. Uh, so, let's see. Uh, not a lot of new stuff this week. Um, let me... Um, we, we have everything that was in progress is still in progress. Uh, the asset HTTP viewer got an update. The voice viewer is still the same, um, and still has an elevated crash rate and we still don't know why. Uh, so that's not likely to be promoted anytime soon. Um, there's a new main viewer out, which has a whole bunch of nice fixes, uh, including some crash fixes, and has the corrected user interface for manipulating, uh, for estate managers to manipulate whether or not people can do band lines. So uh, that's good. That one does not, I think, have a, an elevated crash rate. It's doing pretty well. So if you were going to take a guess as to which one is likely to be promoted next, that would be the way to bet um, today. But we don't have a huge amount of data on that yet. So uh, watch this space. 64-bit um, viewer. Uh, the last major functional addition has gone to QA, and if that does well over the weekend in QA, is likely to get a project viewer update early next week. Uh, this now has the new uh, viewer manager process, and that does all the update handling. Uh, so that's actually a separate executable called the SL Launcher that runs um, that runs first and does the update check and manages the downloads and install. And if there's nothing in, then when it's time to launch the viewer, it launches the viewer as a child process. Then the launcher just sits around waiting for the viewer to exit. Um, eventually in some iteration of the project after 64-bit chips, uh, we, will in a, we will also move the crash data capture out to that process uh, and hopefully then get more robust and complete crash capture data. We may even change what package we're going to use to do that capture with. Um, so. Very good project that I'm very much looking forward to getting started on, uh, but we won't hold up the 64-bit release for that. So there's a chance we can 64-bit release candidate. We uh, we have not have a take on the project work, which is essentially the only the only that the crash is less for people who have 64-bit systems. Um, uh, um, and, it, and it is very significantly less, actually. Um, it's worth mentioning. Um, so uh, if you have if you have a 64-bit capable system, you really do want to download that one, especially if you have a lot of trouble with crashes. Um, so uh, the the uh, the crash rate on Windows 8 and Windows 10 systems right now, our stats conflate them, um, is 
uh, half what it is on the default floor. And on max, um, basically the crash rate is uh, really negligible. But of course, our, our data right now is based on an extremely small sample. So um, I'm very interested in, in getting a, the larger sample that we'll get with a release candidate. Um, so far, we've only got a few hundred users that are using it, and that's not nearly enough. And unfortunately, a bunch of them who have 64-bit systems have the 32-bit version installed. Um, the new installer will, the new new installation code will eventually fix that for them, getting them the best version uh, for them. But that, that functionality isn't in the versions the versions that are out. So uh, let's see. Uh, also, work has resumed on the, as I mentioned before, on the snapshot 360 viewer, and that's coming along nicely. It will involve. Uh, one new library for the viewer because we didn't have enough. Um, so we'll have a, a new package that has to be added that that allows us to put the appropriate metadata into the uh, 360 images so that um, sites that display 360 images will recognize them as 360 images. So that's pretty cool. Um, and it's um, it's it's there are test versions of it working, so we probably will have a project viewer update for that um, sometime soon in the next couple of weeks, um, and hopefully a release candidate not long after that. So there will there will, you'll no longer need to do this business with the 360 viewer of displaying it in the web viewer and then saving the, the image. That will all have been done for you in the viewer. Um, did the bug fix for the SIM handoff issues that affected? Uh, Yes and no. Um, so it turns out we we learned a whole bunch about uh, what was going on um, while that problem was in progress. It was not actually a new problem. Um, it wasn't anything we had done recently, uh, but. Uh, it turned out that we had not looked at the right thing. And anyway, we found the right thing to look at. Um, we've made a bunch of instrumentation changes that allow us to measure. Uh, basically, the only measurement we had before was <clears throat> bad things that happen after um, the CAPS router had run out of connections, which was what the problem was. And... Um, now we have a monitor for how many connections the CAPS router has, and we can see when it's getting close to to the limits. We're using that capability now to study uh, how many are needed, and we will be further adjusting the number there are um, supported. And I think actually that's going to make a very dramatic difference to the number of avatars you can have on a region. Um, so it's it's uh, the good news is we're we're actually discovering something really cool about where one of the bottlenecks was in the architecture and and it doesn't look as though it's going to be difficult to fix. Yes, uh, <laughs> the good news back is that uh, we could see what was going on even before you could. Yeah. Um, right. So we're uh, as is 
as is often the case, uh, it's we're seeing the um, we know what the problem is. We're being very conservative about how we change things. Uh, we're changing them only on a small number of regions, and we've instrumented the heck out of it so that we can see exactly what the effect of our change is. Um, as I said, this is actually not a new problem. We seem to have uh, gotten kind of unlucky. It turns out that it's the number of it's the number of avatars on a simulator host, not on a simulator. Because there, of course, there are many regions on a on a host, and so um, if you're on a crowded region, actually, even if you're on a mostly empty region that happens to share a simulator host with a bunch of crowded regions, you could start having those problems, um, and that kind of disguised what the problem was. Um, uh, it's more complicated than that. Back, it's it's actually a separate process. So the uh, anyway, we're we're um, we're on top of it. Uh, we've got it instrumented now, so that we can really tell what the requirement is, and we're um, we've made some conservative changes in in that'll go out in next week's RC roll uh, RC rolls, and we'll be watching closely um, to see what happens, so that we can. Um, make further corrections and spot any new problems. I mean, one of the one of the things we always have to be concerned about is if we if we change the level of one resource, what we're what we're inevitably doing is removing a, a roadblock, right? And what that might do is cause a big pile up further down the road, right? Um, where it gets even narrower, and we and we don't. That we literally don't have any way of knowing for sure whether or not that's going to happen. So we try to do these things slowly and carefully. Um, we'd rather most people had to live with a problem we know and understand and that they've actually been living with for years than to suddenly introduce a different problem grid wide. So we're, we're doing this slowly and conservatively. Um, but uh, it's, it's pretty clear that we're on the right track and that we'll be able to to remove a, uh, an unfortunate constraint. Um, so we've got a lot going on right now that's uh, whose goal is to increase um, uh, the viable avatar density. That is, you know, how many people you can have around with, without it being a problem. Um, and one can never know about these things, but you know, any kind of time you're working on performance, that's essentially a performance issue. And any times we're working on performance, it's it's a challenge to um, make sure you're working on the right things. Yeah. If if it really is the same problem that uh, Fantasy Fair was having then I'm pretty sure that we can adjust things to make it go away, or at least make it not as bad. Yes, I think uh, being able to support high avatar densities is a really is a really big deal, and that's why we're focusing on it. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to talk about. Thank you for bringing up the subject of the Caps router problem because I did mean to talk about it. Oh, there was there's another problem that we are working on that's also going out in RCs. Where where uh, we discovered one of the problems that we uncovered when we looked at the fantasy fair, fantasy fair problems was that it turns out that it puts a pretty high load on a simulator when people are unsuccessfully attempting to teleport into it. Um, it, it turns out that that costs, the, the, the simulator on the receiving end ends up doing a lot of work when it's such as with TP hammers, exactly. Um, the, the simulator on the, on the receiving end, where you're, the destination, ends up doing quite a lot of work before it can decide 
that, oh, we're not actually going to let this person in and send you back. Um, so, uh, um, so we're going to change the throttles on teleports so that you can't, among other things, we're going to change the throttles on teleports so that you can't do them as fast. Um, so it's uh, likely that we will break some of the uh, existing HUDs that do that, or at least we'll make them not work as well. Um, so, uh, because you, you won't be able to attempt a region-to-region a region teleport um, as fast as those HUDs do now. If you can adjust it, then that'll be good. Now, we're not going to change how long a successful teleport takes. We're going to just change how often you can attempt one. Um, yeah. No, we're not going to attempt a, a queue, Nick. That's adding load to the simulator that you're not getting into right now, which we're trying to avoid. See, that's that's see that's the irony here is that if you've got a crowded region, lots of people are trying to get into, they're all going to fail anyway. And what we want to do is minimize how much work that the simulator has to do in order to keep them out. Um, so that the people who are in are getting a better experience. Um, and, and in fact, the, it's, it, um, it becomes a, it becomes a, uh, a potential griefing vector, right? If you had um, a very high number of avatars spread out over the whole grid, um, they could attempt to teleport into an otherwise full simulator and put a big load on that simulator and slow it down. Uh, we're trying to make sure that that wouldn't work. Uh, we can't we can't enforce anything by changing the viewer, Naran. You of all people should know that. So that's that's coming too. Um, I'm not sure where that is in the release stream off the top of my head. No, we are not implementing a queue. And we don't plan to. It's just too hard. Yeah, that's that's among the problems, Norton. That's right. Uh, we we don't think that the problem is viewers, actually. 
um, because there's a limit to how fast a viewer will tell will will do two teleports anyway. It's uh, that it it just isn't it just isn't that fast. Um, yeah, I mean, if you try to teleport somewhere and it fails, if it succeeds, that's fine. But if it fails, it tends to take a a, a few seconds to fail. We're not talking about putting in massive amounts of time. Even a small delay is is a lot. Um, but that doesn't really apply to scripted teleports. But the throttle will affect every kind of teleport in exactly the same way. It won't make any difference how you initiate the teleport. Um, it won't affect intra-region teleports. So we'll have more on that at the server beta user group um, and the server and scripting user group as it gets closer to being widely deployed. Uh, that's an interesting thought, Beck. I don't know. We'll like it's it's sort of the same thing I was talking about before we we make a change and we try to study what the effect of the change is and then we decide whether or not we need another change Well, we don't want to disable anybody completely, no matter what. <laughs> well, Naran, if I if I was to agree that that would be fun, then uh, that would be quoted on blogs for the next five years. Well, don't don't blame all teleport failures on us. So some of them will just be ordinary teleport failures. But <clears throat> believe me, we have a we have a graph on our metrics dashboard of what the teleport failure rate is, uh, and we pay a lot of attention to that one. It's it's updated in real time. It's great. Uh, 
Uh, I believe I believe it does count as a TP failure when the region is full. And it's not nearly 9%. Um, sorry, I had a local I had a local distraction here for a moment. Is there a relation between the frequency of teleport failure and the size of the inventory of the avatar with the failure? I, uh, other than very extreme cases, I don't think so. Um, I don't have anything definitive on that. Um, it's it's probably possible to construct such an abusively large inventory. Well, no, inventory wouldn't matter. If you if you're wearing a lot of stuff, that would that you could possibly cause a timeout. Um, if you're wearing a lot of scripts and a lot of very large meshes, both of those add to uh, add to your TP time. But stuffing your inventory doesn't have any effect at all. Is it possible to have additional logging enabled automatically after a region crashes? Uh, we certainly don't have any way to do that now. I'm not sure that that would be a good idea because logging can add quite a lot of load. And if a region has a region to, reason to crash, loading it down is probably not the right thing to do. Um, Naran, you can find the code, the code that reports the number of which avatars are 
reported as jellied uh, is in the viewer, by all means, review the code. I welcome your commentary. If I got it wrong, I wrote that. So if I got it wrong, I apologize and I will be happy to get the patch. <laughs> well, I, I, there's there's a bunch of comments in the in that code about both the reporting code and the and the code that calculates the ARC that um, that ask you to please not make changes in there without just contributing them to us so that we can distribute them widely. Um, uh, on that subject, we are kicking off our effort to do a reassessment. We are actually making progress on our effort to reassess the costs of everything, and we may be making some some uh, rendering cost calculation adjustments based on those tests. Uh, but oh, the numbers are not in yet. Yeah, it'll take a it'll take a, a couple of minutes to that for the number to change. Even if you do that experiment, it's not a bad experiment. Um, but since the viewers only report it, I think it's once a minute. And yeah, of course that'll only the experiment will only work if no one else changes their appearance. <laughs> Right, so the the actual impact of high poly meshes is definitely one of the things we're measuring. Yes, you can, Naran. It's reported to your viewer. You can't you can't tell which ones can't see you. You just get a count. see that's a very deliberate choice um, we don't want to we didn't want to create another drama mechanism as much as second life users enjoy drama All right, this is getting out of hand.
unless people change the code, I mean, I don't, we don't have show friends only in our viewer, so I, I wouldn't know, but uh, our viewer reports whether or not it's rendering every avatar it sees, um, whether or not it's rendering it, actually. Well, we don't, we don't have a don't show. You can block somebody, but they're still rendered. They're just rendered gray. <laughs> they become a gray doll. Oh, well, see, I don't keep up with everything. Yeah, we have always show friends, right? That means that they're an exception to the to the arc limit. I freely admit that I don't know everything about what my product is capable of. I rarely go a week without learning something new about it. And I had my seven year anniversary this week. Yeah, my res day was Wednesday. Pretty nice anniversary. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have time to learn everything before I quit. At least the rate at which I'm learning new things doesn't seem to be falling off. So... No, I'm not, I'm not going to quit anytime soon. Yes, my, my res day and my birthday are only uh, a week apart. A little over a week. Well, at least we, at least we agree on some things, Naran. All right. Uh, any other topics besides my shopping habits? You submit a feature request that required an update to the mesh asset format. Uh, no, it wouldn't be impossible. Um, it would. It would depend on what the on what the value of it was, and whether or not it would be uh, whether or not it would be consistent with backwards compatibility. I mean, whether or not we could manage the backwards compatibility. Um, the 
the alpha thing. I don't remember the alpha. Th oh, uh, I'm not sure I remember the alpha thing. We do still have your your lighting change in the queue, Naran, and I apologize for the fact that we haven't made progress on it, but um, we haven't forgotten about it. It wouldn't actually be new at all, Naran. I just don't do this meeting that way. Uh, shadows cast by rigged alpha surfaces. Uh, okay, yeah, that's the sort of rendering issue I haven't had anybody to work on for a while. Yes, well, accepting it means that we agree that it's a that it's a bug and that it would be good to have it fixed. It doesn't mean that we're going to have time to work on it. Yes, I, I understand the need. That's why we accepted it. Um, it's just rendering issues are really hard to get resources for. All LL services bounce to the login screen on Mac rather than remember. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what you mean. There's, there's quite a conversation going on here, Karen. Um, Anna, I assume you're referring to Safari? I don't know why that would...
Um, Uh, it's it's supposed to remember your login. It's it's an open ID cookie. If it may be that you're blocking cookies, and that you need to allow cookies for SecondLife.com. Yeah, there's supposed to be a, I think it's a secondlife.com domain cookie that you get from id.secondlife.com. Um, unfortunately, I have a meeting at the top of the hour that I do have to go to, so this is kind of last call. Um, there's a bunch of work being done on animations, um, and the place to discuss that is the content creation user group. Um, I'm not sure that what you're talking about there falls into that category, into the category of things they're working on, but... Anything animation related should go there for the time being because there is work going on there. So anything related to it uh, she belongs there too. Okay, I gotta go. Sorry, been a good discussion today. Thank you all for coming.